we encourage people to to follow the Lord in obedience, this first step of obedience in baptism after they put their faith and trust in Jesus, when they understand that they are a sinner, that Jesus died in their place, and if they put their faith and trust in him, then they are already dead to their sin, but then they become alive to God. And baptism then is the picture reminding us of what's already happened in their lives. So when we baptize somebody, we are acknowledging publicly that they have have been buried with Jesus in the likeness of his death, and they are raised again to walk in newness of life. Baptism does not wash their sins away. It does not make them a new person, but it's it's a step of obedience. It drives a stake down where that person is able to say publicly, I love Jesus, and I'm aligning my life with him for now and for eternity. So we have two men who want to come and follow the Lord in baptism. Um, one of them, uh, Connie, can you come and make this a little taller? Is way taller than I am. So, uh, Kende, if you'd come on down and join me. And he's going to share his testimony first. And then uh, I will get the privilege of baptizing. Not that tall. Praise God. Amen. Um, my testimony is going to be very brief. Um, I... I was born into a Christian family, into a Christian home, uh, but I did not personally make the decision to give my life to Christ until I was about 17 years old. Um, and even after that, for many years after, I was quite a prodigal son. Um, but in those years when I, was, when I was the prodigal son, I've always felt God nudged towards the right path. And over the years, God has continued to transform me into the um, likeness of Christ. Um, I'm not quite there yet. I'm still a work in progress. Uh, but the transformation um, has been remarkable in the past years. Um, and I've made a decision to publicly um, make, uh, to baptize, to undertake this baptism to publicly um, announce or publicly show that um, my life is completely given to Christ. is very high, even for me. Can we push it down a little bit, please? Thank you. Um, yeah, we need it down just a little bit because the guy who's going to baptize is shorter than I am. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, you guys, and this is so exciting. Baptism is not new to Christians. It didn't start with Christians. It's a very old ceremony. Uh, the Jews did it, other groups, and it was basically a ceremony to show washing. And it still does in one sense. But the New Testament gives the meaning that Lynn said. It's evidence of the death of the old life and going down into the water and the resurrection of a new life and filling with the Spirit that we are a new creature in Christ. It doesn't make us a Christian, but it's like a wedding. It shows a public declaration that we have God in our heart that we are a new creation, and it was commanded by Jesus. 
So at this time, I'm going to call Ricardo down, and he's going to share his testimony, and then we will have the joy of getting to see him. So, can I start, right? So, very good morning, everyone. Oh my goodness, it is already <laughs> wet. <laughs> well, my testimony will not going to be, I mean, uh, short. I'm sorry about that. Um, I have like a four-page testimony, so yeah. But I'll try to be, I mean, as fast as I can. Okay, but yes, uh, I'd like to start uh, reading. Um, I was born in a Catholic family and educated in a Catholic I school. apologize. His last name is Gomez. Oh, yeah, we fast. Ricardo Gomez, Brazil. Sweet Brazil. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. And... Uh, well, yes, and, um, and I was educated also in a Catholic school until college. And uh, even after college, uh, and, and, uh, and until 2010, I had attended services in a Catholic church. Uh, however, I even hadn't, I mean, one church, one specific church. And uh, also, I didn't go uh, to the service frequently that time. Uh, all this, uh, all this time, right uh, until 2010, right, uh, not being a Christian, I thought only about my professional goals, uh, like being recognized as a technical expert, and I mean earning a lot of money, and uh, my pref my personal goals uh, were like having a comfortable house like a Victorian style one, I mean, two stories, uh, I mean, like uh, four bedrooms or even more, right? <laughs> this is a kind of a big backyard, right? Fencing swimming pool with a kind of automatic, I mean, fire pit, you know? And also, I mean, you know, as a man, these are kind of uh, luxury cars, you know, like Porsche, Mercedes, Jaguar, yeah, this was my, <laughs> these were my goals that time, right? But I mean, uh, that time, and uh, this is very important for me, and you will be uh, figuring out why I would like to emphasize this. Uh, that time, I didn't believe that I needed the divine help, I mean, to be successful in life, okay? At uh, that time, I, I didn't believe that I could overcome everything, okay, from my hard work, okay, and I mean, from myself, uh, basically. Uh, but from August 2010, oh, 2010, I'm sorry, when I came back from Brazil, after living overseas for a while, I started attending uh, the Sunday service in the Presbyterian Cathedral Church in Rio, which was the same church as uh, of my wife Anna here in the, the front seat, and uh, one of my cousins that, by the way, I mean, introduced us six uh, months before I just, I mean, came back to Brazil. Um, then, uh, you can imagine, you know, I was a kind of a Catholic man attending an evangelical church. And in April 2012, I got married in another Presbyterian church, not the cathedral, the Presbyterian Church of Botafogo in Rio de Janeiro, also Brazil. Still in, 2010, in 2012, I'm sorry, after my marriage, uh, I began serving on a media team in my current a Presbyterian church that is called High Isis. Also in, in Rio, it's by the way, Anne and I are founder members. During 2012, uh, and in 2000, uh, yeah, during 2012 to 2015, I kept attending uh, and serving in this church and also you know, growing faith. But I still had questions about the Christian life. Uh, and the main one was the following. Why I could not keep trusting in the saints as I was taught my entire life in the Catholicism. This was too hard to me to understand. 
so we overcome the first sheep. <laughs> and folks, here I need to make a clear stop uh, dividing this testimony in two parts. The first one I will be telling you and try and, and I mean answering uh, five questions in this first part. The first one is how I lost my hope in my former life as a Catholic. The second one is how I became interested in the Christianity. The third, what made me believe that the only truth it is from the Bible and that the Lord Jesus is the only way to eternal happiness. Though the five is what I said to them when I decided to be a Christian. On the second part, I will be sharing with you how has been my life after becoming a Christian. Amazing. But no, I mean, at the first, I think amazing, unbelievable. So let me, let me uh, repeat and uh, start, I mean, responding the first five questions. How uh, did I lose the hope in my former life? How did I become uh, uh, interested in Christianity? Uh, what made me believe that the Bible was the only truth and the Lord Jesus the only way for eternal happiness? And how was the moment and uh, what I have said to God to ask him forgiveness and uh, for being able to be baptized? Well, so back in 2015, when uh, Anna and I just returned from our vacation in U.S., by the way, we, uh, I mean, love U.S., no? Uh, and I shared with her my desire to come to U.S. to pursue my Master of Science degree. At that time, this accomplished seemed to be impossible for me. Really, impossible. Impossible. Uh, First, because uh, my English score on the TOEFL test, uh, on the TOEFL test, that is, um, I mean, the test that measured our proficiency of foreigners' proficiency in English, was so low. I got that time like 30 percent, and I needed a, as a minimum 90 percent, right? So, my goodness, I can't remember that time. Secondly because I didn't have the money to cover all of the college expenses uh, and also living expenses here, right? So even worse, mine that time was my first choice. And as you may know, uh, mine is one of the most expensive colleges in the US, you know, even in my field in metallurgy. So, uh, but that time, and this is not in my testimony right now, but I can remember that time, something superior uh, pushed me and said, you need to keep going. I could not understand that time because, you know, it was so impossible. It was so impossible for one having, I mean, uh, 30 plus years old. Uh, but yeah, something superior, uh, told me that time, keep doing, you can. And I said, no, I can't, no, you can, go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, by the way, then I started studying English, I mean, like, uh, like crazy, no? <laughs> yeah, day in, day out, during my lunch time, in, in, my, in my office, in my job, after work hours, during the weekends, I mean, my friends, my parents, uh, sometimes Anna, I could not understand what was going on. But I mean, I was, I mean, I was focused and then, I mean, I felt, I felt something superior I was, I mean, uh, bearing me that time. And this is not in my testimony, but I'm remembering right now. And I'm so emotional also, people, so I'm sorry about that, but it was really true. Uh, so you had no money, no English, and the most expensive school you wanted to go to. Exactly. Oh, that's easy. You yeah. could overcome that, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that I, I couldn't. Yeah. I thought yeah, that I impossible. couldn't. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, that time I, 
just believe it on my own efforts. Yeah. That that was the problem. But now I can understand this, yeah. but I I couldn't that time. I I couldn't that time. Really, I couldn't that time. So, did something change? <sighs> everything changed in my life, Terry. Everything changed in my life. Well, how were you able to do that? Well, <laughs> you'll be seeing this. Uh, <laughs> I think you'll be seeing this <laughs> because you know, at uh, that time, no going out. <laughs> no traveling. Purana. <laughs> All my time away from the job was to study. Was to study. But when I talked to my my boss that time about my plan to come to US and getting a kind of a work leave, he discouraged me saying the company will not be willing to financially support you. And of course, you, you are very recognized here in the company, so uh, you didn't need this course or this experience to keep being promoted. So you know, guys, I didn't believe in him. <laughs> I didn't believe in him, not because of the matter of the promotion, but because of the matter that some something superior was telling me, move forward, move forward. So let me continue this. Um, yeah, of course I felt blue and I talked to my wife about this awful talking with my boss. But Anna, very clever one, right? Yeah, always. She said to me, don't be afraid. God will provide everything that you need. Keep doing and asking God to direct your ways. I heard that, guys. I really, I really did that. I prayed. But I still fought. I I, I, I couldn't feel, and I, that time I still thought that the only way to be successful in that endeavor was through my hard work. I really believed on my hard work. I mean, whatever would be the time for this, I only relied on my hard work. And I am emphasize this because this is a very important turning point uh, in my decision to become a Christian, right? This is the reason why I'm emphasizing. But let's go. In the second semester of 2016, things became even more difficult. Yeah. Uh, when the research and development department in Brazil was dissolved, and I was moved to a new one, to the product engineering department, and concomitantly, uh, this uh, change, uh, this uh, new department had a former, uh, had a new boss. No, I mean the former boss was changed, and the new boss was, um, I mean, was recognized to be a very tough guy. You know, a kind of a bad listener, and I mean, a kind of a no wall folk. You know? so I said, my good lord, <laughs> I'm totally lost right now. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the pushing was there on my back, saying, keep doing. But you know, uh, I was fearing all of uh, those changes, and, uh, and, and even, I mean, for the sake of uh, being, uh, I mean, financially supported by my company, you know, it was, I mean, kind of uh, uh, unbelievable stuff to, to believe that I could get that. And my fear came true when I talked to my new boss. Uh, about my plans to, to come to here to study. And he said, you know, Ricardo, I see, I, I see very, very few chance to get any financial support from our company due to the oil crisis. Yeah, that time we had uh, this uh, oil, crisis, oil crisis. So, but something uh, differently uh, happened at that time because, you know, he didn't discourage me. He was very professional. So 
so I said something is going on here uh, I think something is changing even when I had that I mean negative response I felt something changing that guy you know? so I, I changed my perspective from his behavior and then I mean I kept studying hard and in, in January two uh, 2017 uh, I took my English proficient exam called TOEFL as I mentioned before um, and as I also mentioned before I needed to score well in order to be accepted as I told you guys I had been working very very hard to get that score But during the test, I had a kind of a lapse of thought. My mind went blank in the speaking section. And as you may know, this is uh, the fastest, fastest section during the exam. But here something happened. And I, w I was, I mean, like astonished after that. And I can remember this blankly. I really felt the divine help of God pushing me that time because you know I didn't sleep the day before and this exam was like 9 a.m. in the morning and yes I, I had that lapse of thought and my mind went blank and God pushed me saying, speak, it is time to speak. <sighs> Folks, it seemed like when I was falling to speak, God was holding me. He really was. Praise the Lord. Praise God. In his arms. He giving me all the crown then I needed to keep moving in that exam. That exam seemed to be something unbearable for me, guys. Really, 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 really. So, after living that seven years in an evangelical life, and overcoming that lapse of thought and experience the divine holding of the good Lord during the exam I prayed to God just outside the testing center saying you are great and I can remember this vividly I said this with so excitement like, like I, right now it was amazing <laughs> it was amazing and I felt that you bury me up during my hardship in there and helping me to overcome it. How wonderful you are. You are my only savior. And that time I could understand this. You know, remember the matter of the saints? I thought that the saints uh, could bear me and, and, I mean, and save me. But that time, what I felt was the only one was God was God was, was the good Lord <laughs> he was the only one who could bear you he was yeah. the one who could help you that time I, underst I, I understood that that's so awesome so you are my only savior and I want to be your son and give my life to you at that moment like I told you I figured out that I could not succeed rely on my own efforts but I needed God next to me, giving me a hand. And also I realized that God, I was in control and that I, I didn't need it. I didn't need anyone between God and me. Praise the Lord. Like the sense. Yeah. Moreover, during all of uh, those seven years listening to the service in the Presbyterian Church, in reading the passage uh, in the Bible, I could see the, that the whole book was 
uh, was always advocating peace and love between all people without any kind of favoritism. In addition, the teachings from the Bible, when applied in my life, and this is a, a kind of a very practical thought, always brought me calm, light, and helped me to make the best decisions. Always. Furthermore, the Bible always had the answers for our questions. I do believe in that. Right? 100%. And it is true. From this, I saw the Bible was the only source of the truth and that Jesus Christ was the only one that suffered the maximum punishing because of my sins and that he was the only one that overcame death raising to, uh, raising to reverence and who said you humans can only be saved by faith not by the work of yourselves I hold you and there is a place in the heaven for you sons of God so, here are some questions. So, who else can guarantee all those gifts to us? Only the Lord Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father God. So, at that moment in time, in January 2017, understand that I could not be successful alone, meaning I needed God. I could have a very close relationship with the highest without anyone in between. That I am saved by faith, but not by my work. And that this was a gift from the God. I decided to be baptized at the same day that I did the TOEFL test. Without knowing my score. I, that time, this is so important, because that, that grade was so important to me but when I felt God I said this is not the most important thing to me oh, the, Lord. the most important thing to me is God mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't need any score anymore it was awesome because I, I felt free <laughs> well yeah so and uh, let, me, let me know where I am right now so yeah I know at that moment in January 2017, uh, no, I, I'm not here. Huh? Okay. So, yeah. The moment that uh, I decided to be baptized, I prayed. And I remember that I, I said, in, in other words, because, I mean, I mean, Terry as a tutor is amazing. And he explained to me uh, in my uh, I mean, I had my own words, but uh, Terry helped me to translate that in a more clear way, right? So thank you so much, Terry. I, I said the following. Jesus, I believe that you are God. I do believe that you have suffered, died, in, and made the total payment for my sins. But you have raised it from the dead, and you are the Lord of everything. I'm really sorry, and I need your forgiveness on a daily basis, because I'm a sinner. However, believing you, I'm strong. I can overcome any barrier, and I'm saved eternally. By your grace, I want to be baptized, showing everyone, but everyone, every single individual and being, that I have accepted you, God, as my only Savior. That my old life will be buried, and my new one will be rising under the glory of the Heavenly Father. And then I was sprinkly baptized because we didn't have this awesome pool. 
in the Raízes Presbyterian Church in Rio, Brazil. So, folks, this, this part, I mean, responded the first five questions uh, that I had. And then now, I will be approaching the last one, and, I'm prom and I promise that I'm finishing. Right? But let's come back in February 2017, uh, just after I became a Christian, and this will be responding, how has been my life with Christ. That time in February 2010, I was very active in the church, being the member of the uh, welcoming team, attending the small groups with Anna, and of course, studying for the GRE, the graduate record exam. That was another, I mean, test that I needed to score well to, to I mean, to be up, approved here. So in August 2017, I took the GRE and achieved the required grade just as the time, um, just after the time for completing my application process. I, I had some uh, kind of a deadlines that time. Uh, but, I mean, that time my company uh, was not still uh, willing to, uh, I mean, to support me uh, to come here. And also, I experienced uh, some folks doubting that I could be approved here. Right, uh, and I mean, you know, also I, at that time I had a very uncomfortable uh, station in my company, so because of that, <laughs> they told me, no, you not, I mean, uh, wanting to leave all of this comfort to, to be a student again and to go to another country. So <laughs> inside, they smiling, saying, <laughs> I have God, folks. <laughs> you don't know anything, but God knows. Um, yeah. Um, but in October 2019, yeah, and I'm sorry for being so emotional, but... <laughs> you know what? Celebrations and ceremonies are to be enjoyed, and God gave us emotions. So just enjoy those emotions. Yeah. We are. Yeah, we because are. it was... It was so amazing, and uh, yeah, now I can understand this plainly, but that time in October 2019, uh, I just, so, yeah, something from the heavens, something I happened. My company president called me and asked me to come as soon as possible to one of our production units to work in the graveyard shift. With the following mission, mission, I'm sorry, to increase the productivity of that shift in 300%. Wow. So it was not 100%, it was 300%. So I said, what is going on here? I can't remember. I mean, seriously, uh, he told me that I needed to improve the wield of the that shift. In f in four, uh, I mean, the, the wield was that time like 40 uh, oil pipes per shift, and I needed the minimum per night shift 120 oil pipes. So, come on. I thought, okay, it was not possible. It was not possible, and also the time being, I mean, we had just, I mean, it was in October, and we had the, the, the next ship in December, December 23rd. So how to do that? I mean, and I mean, he told me something detailed that, I mean, you know, he was so kind, saying, you know what? The re-election of the president of a certain Middle Eastern country depend upon this pipeline project. Getting finished. Yeah, in time. Did the president send you a thank you if you were able to do that? Uh, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we don't know you got, if you went from 40 <laughs> to 120 to do it. So, I mean, uh, then he asked me at the end of uh, this uh, wonderful, sh I mean, calling uh, do you as 
accept the challenge? Folks, do you think that I had any other option? Other? Wow, I'm very excited. <laughs> this is a very good I mean, opportunity for me, right? So, of course, I'll be there I mean, as soon as possible. And then at that day, late in the night, I called her and I said, you know what? I'm lost. I'm totally lost because, I mean, I think this is an impossible mission. I cannot do that. And if I had the minimum chance to get any financial support from a company, I mean, we will be gone in, in, in this project. Yeah, but here, the clever girl again. I'll show you. I'll show you this. Anna said, don't be afraid. Folks, she, she didn't record this. She said this, and I can remember vividly. God will provide everything that you need. And go and do your best. So, interestingly, uh, the last time that Anna said to me that word, I was not a Christian. But this time, I was. And that saying came so powerfully uh, to me that I thought, yes, here is God acting throughout Anna, giving me the power that I need to succeed. So I can remember the other day I was feeling so strong, so strong that I said, yes, I'll be able to do more than 120 oil pipes. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it was tough to believe. When I arrived in the shop the next Monday, folks, really, I found like 35 men, workers, completely defeated completely defeated. They didn't believe in themselves and you know all of their heads, heads were down, completely down. And I can remember that day after the, the, the nice graveyard shift that I was working that time I, I arrived in, in my hotel home that, that meal was I mean 300 kilometers far from my place and my office at 10 a.m. to sleep and I asked God, God, please open my eyes. Let me see the proper strategy to increase this production. Show me what I need to do to, to cheer these guys up and motivate them and convince them that they are great professionals and that we can do that. Also, I, 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 I need to be held at time. But I was sure that, I mean, praying to God, I would be. And I felt strong. So, brothers and sisters, I will make this part of the story short because, I mean, it is uh, pretty long. But Anna was, uh, was correct and right. God provided everything. God provided everything. I think even people uh, inside my company right now, I mean, cannot believe that we did that. But yes, but I, I know why, because I had God with me. No? Uh, he made me see what was, going, uh, what was going wrong that time, what was needed to bring the best of, uh, out of that guys and accomplish that mission. And now, uh, when I was uh, writing this testimony, Anna, uh, who lived this experience with me very intensely, uh, reminded me that we came back home on December 2002nd. And you remember that the shipment was like uh, December 2003rd. And I recollected the moment when my team and I approved the last oil pipe to comply with the December uh, 23rd shipment. Praise God. God was with me, guys, uh, in that final inspection station at 5 a.m. in the morning. I, f 
felt him on my right side saying we made that I disagreed it because I said you made that throughout throughout we but you made that folks he's so great that we ended up producing 100 more pipes <laughs> and I mean you know uh, when I arrived here and uh, I met this a friend from uh, that I mean that Middle Eastern country and he told me that he uh, was very happy because of the pipeline because it was a kind of uh, giving uh, I mean his uh, people a kind of energy independence and I said, of course, I'm also very happy. <laughs> and you know why I, I told this that? Because this, uh, this project was, uh, I mean, uh, in an earthly matter, key for me to be here. But, I mean, the key was God. No. So, uh, beginning in 2020, uh, 2018, I received the letter of the chief tech technical officer of my company congratulating me for what I did in that project and uh, he told me that he was sure that I was the, high, uh, the right person to change the game and to comply with that December shipment that moment I thought to myself have you talked to God because he was the one who enabled those pipes to be produced in so in so tight uh, of time? Not me at all. Well, in March of that year, I started receiving the acceptance letters. First, Missouri, then Mississippi State, then uh, University of Memphis, and then North Texas. But all of them without any kind of a scholarship. Then some re uh, relief came when I received the acceptance letter from the University of Aachen in Germany, where I didn't need to pay for my college expenses. At that moment, my dream was coming true at certain extent. And even if my company was not willing to financially support me, I would have the money to cover my family expenses in Germany. So, as I told you, at certain ex extent, uh, my my dream of um, coming coming to uh, another country to study and pursue my master degree, I mean, was being fulfilled. However, uh, having this, I mean, would mean. Oh yes, but I mean, as I needed in that situation, going to Aachen uh, to. I mean, to cover my, my living expenses uh, of Fun and I, I mean, it will be difficult to keep helping my parents financially uh, and also my sister. So that situation stressed me a lot because, uh, you know, I mean, they are very important for me and be able to, I mean, to help them financially and and in, in their health insurance is something, I mean, <sighs> crucial for me, no. But here again, God again was even more merciful to me. In March 2018, I was with my boss in Houston when I mean, I received this uh, first letter from Missouri. And yes, I mean, I was a little bit afraid, but I talked to him saying, yes, I started receiving the, the acceptance letters. Uh, those are my projects in each of uh, the universities that I have applied. So I don't want to leave the company at all. I needed the company. I needed the money. What I want is uh, to be a better professional. 
and I mean I need to to be better speaking English and I mean what do you think I need your help yeah folks that tough guy I mean just told me I think we can get a sponsorship for you I just I mean stop it and I mean uh, keep I um, kept looking at him and folks this is not my testimony but I can remember that time my boss didn't have the look of my current boss he's saying was not from my current boss was God that time again saying your performance during the Zor pipeline project was outstanding I think that is the right moment for having the scholarship for you However, he told me the following. Your chances for a scholarship are greater if you head to Colorado School of Mines. Yeah. Smart man. <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. However, here, one point. I didn't have received yet the acceptance letter for Colorado School of Mines. And so I said, my goodness, what can I do right now? But you know, as I told you, I was astonished that day in the hotel, I burst into cries, into tears. And I thanked God so much for everything that he had been doing in my life that, I mean, I was already fulfilled it. Uh, I was shocked by what God did. Uh, you know, God closed my former department, moving me to a new one with a boss that was supposed to be a bad leader. Sent me to accomplish a kind of an impossible mission from my perspective. And now the company was willing to support me in my studies what was going on yeah now I know what is going on I didn't have words and proper words to tell God how grateful he was and how little but how little I was before his power but at that time I was worried because I didn't uh, have received yet any communication from mines. Well, so in April 2018, Anne and I came to U.S. to visit the universities where I was approved, not mine that time yet, in April. Usually these letters like in March, but I didn't have mines. Uh, and I, wa I was also planning to travel to Germany uh, in June 2018 to see that university. Although, while hiding a hope in and hope of buzz in Chicago, I got a call from my, voice, my boss saying, you know Ricardo? Ricardo? This was my Portuguese intonation, my goodness. Uh, I'm trying hard. The company has given you a full scholarship and will cover all of your expenses in U.S. Praise God. That's awesome. But two conditions are required. Always these conditions. And I, I don't, bl I mean, it, it was fine, it was fair. The two conditions are, first, you need to go to Colorado School of Mines. 
you need. I mean, I couldn't have any other chance to be sponsored. Definitely. Second, you cannot leave the company until three years after your graduation. I said, amazing, so I have a job after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though, you know, uh, I was in two minds, fellow, beloved fellows, because of that, because, you know, from one, one side, I was very excited because of getting uh, that financial support. But from the other side, I didn't have the, the letter from Colorado School of Mines yet. No. But that day, the relief came with God. Because later, that day, I did receive the letter of approval from Colorado School of Mines. Ah, Lord. Yay. Guys, I cried, I mean, fiercely inside the hotel room, Anna as well, recognizing the, I mean, the greatness, the merciful of our good Lord. Of course, I mean, uh, giving you some details, I mean, the, the night just, I mean, finishing in the Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> eating a lot and praising God in the middle of that restaurant in Chicago. So, I I'm, I'm promise that I'm finishing, guys. At the end of July 2018, I arrived in Golden, and in that August, I met this wonderful couple, Terry and Trudy in the International Student Orientation. After that presentation, I thought, my goodness, such a blessed couple. I think, uh, and I want to be like that couple with Anna, because they are so amazing. Also, what a beautiful church helping the freshmen students like that. I have never experienced such kindness. Then I came to the garage giveaway and I met a lot of um, beloved folks, John, Gail, and other ones who made me feel like in my relative home. The, ne the next uh, Sunday, the next survey on Sunday, that, that week, I met the wonderful Pastor Lane, Connie, Pastor Levi, Sarah, Shad, Mary, Larry, and many other beloved ones. And I couldn't believe in such a greatness, kindness. I felt loved by all of that people that I was first, first time seeing, meeting, and I thought with myself, what is going what is going on here? These people are uh, these people really really have the matter of helping and loving others in a very high stand. What has God been doing that hurts? I wanna learn this behavior. Then I called Anna that day and said, hey, I found an amazing church. I second to none here in Golden, the first. Have a look what they have done to me. They are great. And Anna, clever one again, told me, I told you the Baptists are much better than the Presbyterians. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I totally agree. And, and also she said, yeah, because you know, I'm also Baptist. <laughs> I was Presbyterian that time. Then I started attending the Sunday service and the International Bible School class at the church. Since then, I have been undergoing a startling improvement on my faith and on my understanding of the Bible and on my desire to share the good news with others. I am still not good 
at making disciples. We still have our, our work to be done. But I'm taking, I, I'm taking the discipleship classes with Pastor Levi and asking God daily to give me the proper skills to do that. I need Him, God, to show me how I can better serve His kingdom. But the matter of the fact is that even after being already baptized by sprinkling, that was so important for me that time, I felt the need of being immersed, showing that my old life is dead with the immersion, and that my new life has shown when I will come up and raise from the beneath. This new life will mean that I have accepted to live my entire life with Christ. Working daily for His glory. Engaged in being and making disciples. Folks, those are the reasons why I have asked Pastor Lane, Pastor Levi, and Terry to be baptized by immersion. And I'm very honored and being pleased for being allowed to be here today and share this very special moment with my beloved brothers and sisters from the first in Golden. Beloved ones, I thank you so much for having me and uh, for listening to me, for being uh, patient to me, and uh, for let me, letting me to share this testimony. It's the first time in my life that I have done that. And maybe even my parents don't know this as you know right now. So you are all very special to me. Thank you so much. God bless you. Before we uh, have the joy of seeing you follow the Lord in the command of baptism, Pastor Lynn is going to pray for you. Yeah. I'm back here. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in Jesus.